Do you wonder how many animals you can graze on your land without doing damage or underutilizing the grass? Well, one way you can do this is by trial and error. However, we don't recommend this because this takes a lot of time and could damage your resource while you're doing it. The best way is to do a quick calculation that we call determining your stocking rate to figure out how many animals you can have on your land. Forage supply is the pounds per acre that your land produces. This greatly depends on a number of factors including soil type, precipitation, plant species, and previous management. A good rule of thumb is to only use 35% of your forage. This leaves 50% for the future health of the plant and 15% for wildlife use. Forage production can be estimated several ways. See the range cast on estimating forage production. Once you have been outside and determined your forage supply, you can determine what your forage demand is. Forage demand is expressed in animal unit months or AUMs. One AUM is equivalent to the amount of forage a 1,000 pound cow and her calf can eat in one month, which is roughly 800 pounds. Five sheep or 0.75 of a horse is also equal to one AUM. This is a nice way to compare forage demand of all animal types. So, if you have a herd of 1,200 pound cows, your animal unit equivalent for each cow is 1.2. An 800 pound steer is 0.8 animal unit equivalents. Lion sheep is 0.2 animal unit equivalents. And a mature saddle horse is about 1.3 animal unit equivalents depending on weight. Let's run through an example of how to use these numbers to calculate our stocking rate. We'll start with forage supply. In our example ranch, we have a 100 acre pasture that produces 400 pounds per acre. When we take 100 acres times 400 pounds per acre, we get 40,000 pounds of forage. This is our total forage production. Remember that we are only going to use 35% of this for grazing livestock. The other percentages will be used towards grazing wildlife and for plant health. So if we take 40,000 pounds times 35%, we get 14,000 pounds. This is our forage supply. So now we need to figure out our forage demand. In this example, we'll be using a 1,000 pound cow. Remember, a 1,000 pound cow can eat 800 pounds of forage per month. This is our forage demand. So then we divide our 14,000, our forage supply, by our forage demand, which is 800 pounds, and we get 17.5. This means we can graze one cow for 17.5 months, or 17.5 cows for one month. If you would like to graze for six months, we take that 17.5 months, divided by six, and we get approximately three cows. So we can graze three cows on our 100 acre pasture for six months. This is our stocking rate. Let's say we wanted to graze a different type of animal. We convert using our animal unit equivalents. So if we have the 17.5 animal units per month and we want to graze horses, which is 1.3 animal unit equivalents, we take our 17.5 divided by 1.3 and we get 13.5. So this means we can graze 13.5 horses for one month or just one horse for a little over a year or 13.5 months. When calculating stocking rate, many times we will have a fraction of an animal, like 1.7 cows. Remember to always round down because we will not have enough forage for that extra fraction of an animal. Rangeland production can change drastically from year to year depending on that year's precipitation. 
Thus, the amount of time you can graze the same number of animals may be much shorter in a year with less forage production. Therefore, you should adjust your stocking rate according to your supply. Don't put full faith in your calculations. You may be out in your pasture while your animals are grazing, and you start to notice that you're hitting your target utilization level. If that's before the calendar says you're supposed to move, trust the grass, not your calculations, and move your animals anyway. The stocking rate is a useful tool to determine how many animals your land can support for a specific amount of time. Taking just a quick amount of time to calculate your stocking rate will help ensure that the land is healthy for generations to come. This has been Ashley Garls and May Smith from the University of Wyoming Extension.